Hi, I'm Ranger Valerie Bell and I work for the Cape Cod National Seashore. Today we're out here at the Great Island area and we're going to go exploring and we're going to be looking at several different intertidal zones. Here we are at the intertidal zone and what the intertidal zone is, is the area of land that's exposed when the tide goes out. So it covers the area of land where the water is, where the water is the lowest and up to the edge of the water when it's at high tide. So we're in the middle of the intertidal zone. Welcome to the Great Island Salt Marsh. This is one of the many intertidal zones that we have at Cape Cod National Seashore. One of the most interesting animals that lives in the intertidal zone is the fiddler crab. And they make numerous little holes all along the beach uh, that they live in for protection. Uh, male fiddler crabs are the ones that are the most recognizable in that they have one very large claw and apparently somebody thought it looked like a fiddle or a violin and hence they were named the fiddler crabs. A female fiddler crab doesn't have the big claw. She only has two little claws. Fiddler crabs are herbivores, which means they eat algae. So they come out onto the mud flats and they scrape the mud and they put it in their mouth, they swish it around and they suck off all the algae and they spit out little round balls of mud after they've extracted the food. They are able to stay out of the water for a fairly long time because under their shell there's a little space that they can put water in. They do have gills, so they are breathing water, but they take some of that water with them as they go. They need to feed uh, out of the water so they stay very close to the edge of the water so they have holes that follow the tide. They have holes at the high tide line, at the mid tide line, and they have holes at the low tide line so they can feed all day long at low tide. Here we are at the tidal flats in Wellfleet. Many, many different intertidal organisms live here. Let's go see what we can find. One of the most common creatures that you'll find here and in any of our tidal flats is a crab called the green crab. Now the green crab is called a walking crab because all of his legs are pointy. So he doesn't swim very much, but he does walk. Now the green crab, unfortunately, is not a native to our area. This crab was introduced a long time ago from Europe. And so he's considered sort of an invasive species because when they get bigger, they can actually do damage to shellfish beds. So that's the green crab. He's a crustacean, which means that when he needs to grow, he's going to shed his outer exoskeleton for his outer shell and underneath will be a brand new bigger shell that he can grow into. A native crab in our area is called the calico crab or sometimes called the lady crab. And here's a little calico crab and if you notice the back legs on this are flattened. So she's a swimming crab. So these crabs not only walk, but they're also excellent swimmers. These are native to this area, and they eat fish. Sometimes if they can catch them alive, they'll eat them alive, but they do also scavenge. And seagulls and other larger fish like tatog will eat them. That's the lady crab. The lady crab or calico crab is also a crustacean and will do the same thing. They'll molt or shed their exoskeleton. Sometimes on the beach, you'll find empty crab shells. And instead of it always being a dead crab, sometimes it's just the old shell that the crab left behind when it molted. Oh. Okay, I'm going to try to take a crab out of the bucket without getting pinched. And then we're going to let him go, and you're going to watch a particularly interesting behavior that these crabs have, and it's why you don't see as many of them as there are out here. There's literally thousands of these crabs out here, but you're not going to see most of them because they have a really cool way to hide. Alright, so here's our calico crab, and we're just going to put it right here in the sand, and it's going to dig in with its back feet, <laughs> and down he goes. <laughs> That's good. Encore. 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 <laughs> so we're going to try this again in case some of you blinked. All right. So we're going to put another 
calico crab in the sand. Now, why do you think he does that? So, what did we what did we say is a reason that the calico crab digs himself in the sand? What do you think? Predators. Predators. So yeah. there are seagulls out there and certain fish that like to eat these crabs. So that's how they can escape. And they can't run or swim fast enough, so they can go into the sand. Here we are at a rocky area of the intertidal zone, and this is a very different habitat than the sandy area that we were in earlier. This whole area is just covered with rocks, and rocks turn out to be a very good hiding place for very small organisms like baby crabs, barnacles, snails, and underneath the rocks you can often find worms and other uh, benthic organisms that live out here on the tidal flats. Right here we have a rock and it's covered with white animals called barnacles. And barnacles are actually related to crabs, they're a crustacean. Also living on this rock are some snails and these are periwinkles and they're eating the algae that's growing on this rock. And underneath we have a small crab and this is called a purple um, Japanese shore crab and it's got little striped purple legs. This is also an invasive species, just like the green crab. So you can see, even with this, just this one rock, we have many different animals taking advantage of this habitat. This is a place where many, many very important species of animal live. If you've ever eaten clams or oysters, this is the area where they like to live. Lots of crabs live here. This is where a lot of our shorebirds come to feed on the small animals that live in the sand. So it's a really important place and a really interesting ecosystem.